Hi everyone, it's week two of Ranger Stew's Virtual Zoo and uh, this week it's Mini Beasts. So I see some of you have done some awesome Mini Beast crafts already this week and some of you have already even started your Mini Beast hunts as well. So well done, I, I love seeing all the pictures that you send me. And uh, so today's video is all about Mini Beasts or Invertebrates. So we're going to find out what an invertebrate is and we're going to show you how to go on a Mini Beast hunt what me and my son found on our mini beast hunt, and I'm gonna show you a couple of our really big mini beasts that we keep at my zoo. So uh, stay tuned and enjoy. So what is a mini beast? Mini beasts are found on every single habitat on earth. And you might know them as creepy crawlies, but the long name for mini beasts is invertebrates. And invertebrate literally means without a backbone. So they generally have two things in common. One, they don't have a spine or a backbone. And two, they are cold blooded. So every single mini beast on this earth, from the tiny microscopic fly, all the way up to the colossal squid, have two things in common. They don't have a spine and they are cold blooded. One really cool thing that we have here at Cedars Nature Centre is our mini beast house, our bug hotel. And it's behind me here. And you can see that I've actually stuck some little uh, fake bugs on here. So a little uh, butterfly and an ant, a praying mantis, a cockroach. Um, but they, it does actually have some live animals in here as well. And um, so I've got my little magnifying glass. And what we like to do is we like to look inside of here and see what bugs we can find. Um, sometimes you'll find hibernating animals like wood lice sort of deep in the mini beast house. Sometimes you'll see butterflies landing on here just for a rest or um, maybe even a, a queen bee that's actually hibernating inside the mini beast house. So it's really good for, um, for winter really when you have lots of animals that, or lots of creepy crawlies mini beasts that want to find somewhere sheltered to get away from the wind and the rain and the snow, somewhere where the frost doesn't reach them. And so by having a big mini beast house like this, it really provides a space for them to wedge themselves in amongst some bits of uh, grass or twigs or wood or bricks. Um, and they can really hide away there and wait till it gets a lot warmer, like spring as it is today. Um, and when you're on your mini beast hunts, take a little uh, magnifying glass and you can see animals a lot closer. Say we saw an ant. Now obviously that is a ginormous ant there, but if it was a tiny... Oh, guys, there is an, an actual ant here. So what you want to do, I can demonstrate, have a real good close look. However, what you don't want to do, you don't want the sun to go through this lens. Because if you do that, you could actually essentially cook the animal that you're looking at because that amplifies the, uh, the sun's heat and you don't want to cook anything, okay? So when you're looking at that mini beast, that little ant, um, you want to make sure that it's, the sun's not beaming down on them. But you can look really close and you should see that insects like ants have six legs. Um, they've got these really cool antennae that they use to find their way around. Um, just loads of cool stuff, really, you can do with a mini beast house and we get lots of school groups that come in and um, they like to have a little look at this as well and see what animals they can find. So you don't necessarily need a mini beast house to find creepy crawlies, but I thought I'd show you a little bit about our one as well. So we're gonna have a look in my own garden and see what we can find. Hi everyone, so we've done a little mini beast hunt and we've found a couple of creatures in the garden, haven't we Jacob? Yeah. And so can you tell everyone what it is, what's in this hand? This is a snail mm -hmm. and this is a caterpillar. And they look very similar, don't they? Yeah, but, but the caterpillar is more greenish. Okay, and this one's all curled up, isn't it? Whilst doing our mini beast hunt, we came across this really cool creature. And um, it's a picture rather than a video because it was so fast. But um, it's something called a dark edged bee fly. And I'd never even heard of this creature before. I had to look it up and uh, it was really cool to actually work out what animal it is. Um, but it just goes to show that even in your own gardens, you never know what you're gonna find on a mini beast hunt. You, you might find an animal that you've never even heard of before. How cool is that? And here are some common garden snails. 
and uh, I haven't used this shovel since last year. I'm not sure what's happened to the top one. Perhaps it was eaten by a thrush, which is a, a bird that likes to eat snails. Um, but these two are still hibernating on the on the uh, spade. Sort of squish itself down there and attach to the spade, and they can stay there, sort of nice and humid and moist for uh, winter. If you want to see some big snails, we'll uh, show you some big snails now. So if you thought those snails in your garden were big, look at these guys. These are giant African land snails, and uh, this is what they would uh, naturally look like. They've got a lovely pattern shell with a little grey foot there. Um, this one here is actually a rescue, and um, so its shell doesn't look as good, but uh, it does have this lovely yellow foot, and that means it's somewhat of a partial albino, I believe. Uh, it's not a full albino because its shell would be white as well. Um, and these aren't even fully grown yet. These guys will grow to about double the size that they are now. And where they are found in the wild, they're found in sort of humid areas because snails need a lot of humidity to survive. They've got, a, they've got to have a bit of a wet foot to move around and it is called a foot. Um, their entire body is a foot. They do everything with their foot. They eat food for their foot. They poo for their foot. Can you imagine that? Not, not pooing through your foot. Uh, don't put your foot down the toilet. But eating through your foot. Crazy stuff. And um, this one now is actually coming out. I'm going to see if I can turn it slightly. See if you can see its little eyes. Here you go. Can you see that? And so, they have four what's called tentacles. I used to think they were called antennae, but they are actually called tentacles. They've got two on top, um, and those are their eyes and they can see shadows with that, not very, not very well at all. Um, and then they've got two underneath, and uh, that's how they taste the air. So they go, oh, what's that? Uh, grass, uh, leaves, uh, McDonald's. And so they can find their way around, loves a Big Mac. And so they can follow their way around um, by using their tentacles to sort of taste the air, I guess. And so they are amazing animals, these guys. And like I say, they get about double this size, which is a massive, massive snail. Um, but we're going to look at some other mini beasts now, so I'll end this here, and let's look at one with perhaps a few more legs. So this animal does have more legs, sorry I should have given you a spider warning, but it is a Chilean rose tarantula. And Chilean rose tarantulas, like all tarantulas and spiders, have eight legs, or sh I should say they have eight true legs. They have two little um, things that look like legs at the front, but they're actually called pedipalps. I'm going to bring it a bit closer, don't panic. Um, hopefully you can see the pedipalps. Can you see them there? One there, one there. And uh, that is what they use to flick food into their mouth. So they have fangs that sit underneath those pedipalps and uh, they inject those sort of fangs into their prey. They will then inject venom into that prey. That animal, I'm going to make sure he doesn't fall. Those, or oh, she is a girl. She's called Tallulah, by the way. But um, they'll inject that venom into that animal and turn the insides of that animal into a bit of a milkshake consistency, really. And then they will drink the insides of that animal through their fangs, just like you would a milkshake for a straw. So, uh, this is an arachnid, and we are going to meet another arachnid in a moment. I'm going to pop Tallulah back because she's getting quite active. Uh, the next arachnid we meet, we cannot touch. Louis. So this is our second arachnid. It is a tri-coloured burrowing scorpion. And um, this one I will not pick up. I'm gonna film from a little bit further back. And that is because if it was to sting me, it would really, really hurt. Apparently, um, the venom sort of travel up your limb, whatever limb you're stung on. Say it's uh, your finger. Uh, it will travel up your entire arm and uh, you'll have a bit of a burning sensation for about 24 hours. So it's very painful and um, you do not want to touch that sting. So this is the mum. She used to be called Mr. Stingy, but uh, <laughs> a couple of years ago she actually gave birth to 16 babies. And I was like, probably a girl. So uh, she's called Mrs. Stingy now. And Mrs. Stingy, as we say, gave birth to 16 babies. And in a minute I might show you one of those babies. But you can see she's got these big claws one on either side, and that's what she uses to hold on to her prey, to overpower her prey. And she will use her sting, but the bigger the scorpion, the less dangerous they are. 
Whereas the smaller the scorpion, generally the more dangerous they are. And this is because big scorpions use their big claws to overpower their prey. And they don't really use that little sting. It's a bit like a bee sting. Uh, although obviously this one's a little bit more dangerous. Whereas the smaller the scorpion, the more deadly they are. And this is because they've got little claws that they can't really hold onto their food with. So they use a big sting to paralyze their prey. Oh yeah. So do not poke it. So should we have a look at our babies? They're quite small still, even though they're over a year old now. So this is one of Mrs. Stingy's babies. And baby scorpions we call scorplings. And just like its mother, if this was to sting you, it would hurt about the same, okay? So although it's about the same size as your thumb now, maybe a bit bigger, and it's quite a chunky scorpion, this one, little baby, um, its venom is as potent as its parents. So if it was to sting you, it would hurt as much as the parents' venom would. And you can see it's got these little claws at the front that it uses to hold onto its prey. And uh, those are actually petty pouts on a scorpion. Their petty pouts are their claws. On a tarantula, remember, their petty pouts are these two sort of mini legs at the front. So, scorpions and arachnids have eight legs. We are gonna meet an animal now with a lot more than that. So I did say that we'd meet an animal with a lot more legs. And this little creature just unrolling right now is called Millie. And as you can imagine from that name, she is a millipede. She's a giant millipede. And um, millipedes have lots and lots of legs. So uh, I think this species can have up to about 250 legs. Uh, but I believe, I have to look this up. I might add a little extra bit in a minute. But I believe the millipede with the most legs had about 700 legs. So they don't have, they don't have um, millions of legs, but they have lots and lots. And I'm gonna try and get a bit of a close up of its legs there. Can you see that? In fact, if I touch the screen for a second, it might focus on it. Can you see your legs moving? There you go, you can see her antennae. She's using her antennae to sort of find her way around. And millipedes are herbivores, and herbivores eat plants, okay? But if you've heard of a centipede, I'm sure you all have, they have less legs. They have uh, about 100 legs, it's in their name, centi. And um, centipedes are carnivores, so they eat meat, so I would not want to have a giant centipede on my hand right now. Um, those are called scullopendra, uh, and apparently if you are bitten by a scullopendra centipede, pain is so extreme that um, some people have been known to pour boiling water on the wound to try and get rid of the pain. So uh, not nice at all. Look, she's going for a bit of a wonder there. Oh, you can see her legs very well there. There you go. So we're going to pop Millie back to bed. Everybody say bye Millie. So I hope you enjoyed that video guys, learning all about mini beasts or invertebrates and uh, how you guys can go on a mini beast hunt as well. And don't forget, when all of this is over, come visit my zoo, Cedars Nature Centre. You can see the millipedes, the scorpion, the tarantula, the snails, they're all on display. And your school can even come along and do a mini beast hunt. So guys, take care, stay safe, and I will see you soon.